construction, golf news, equipment, travel, interviews, course profiles, and more. Your weekly fix of all things golf is about to begin. It's the Flagstick Podcast with your hosts, Jeff Bonner and Scott McLeod. Good day, golfers, and welcome to the Flagstick Podcast, presented by TaylorMade Golf Canada. Introducing Stealth with Carbon Face for better energy transfer and more ball speed. Welcome to the Carbon Wood Age. To learn more, visit TaylorMadeGolf.ca. It is great to have you all uh, tuning in once again to another episode of Flagstick Podcast with you, as always, myself, Jeff Botter, and uh, to my left or to my right or in the audio forum, Mr. Scott McLeod. Are you Scott, how are you, bud? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Um, awesome. Another weekend has passed and we're back at another <laughs> uh, another recording of another podcast. And man, uh, uh, this past weekend was a little bit more... Uh, summer like yeah, a little golf more golf weather related yeah. uh, feel that warm weather uh back did you get out to play at all on the weekend yeah i managed to which was great it was nice to get out heard from a lot of other people as well that uh you know they got out uh golf courses obviously were you know uh, recovering a little bit from some rain and moisture last week so some didn't quite have carts out people that i talked to but uh yeah it looked pretty busy and i was glad to get out um batted nine holes with my daughter i think that was saturday night it's all a blur i'm just back from toronto <laughs> uh we'll get to that why yes. um but yeah it, it was it was fun to get out in warm weather it's fun to get out in less than three layers how's that yeah very much so well it was short so i definitely had the shorts and uh and t-shirt on most of the weekend but it was more of a yard work weekend uh again for me i know we uh we bantered <clears throat> about there last week about me getting. Don't you have new golf clubs? I do have new golf clubs, and uh, I'm very excited to uh, to get out and and play around a round of golf with them. But I did hit them, uh, you know, because I do have the net, so I did get a chance to hit them, and I did like them a lot. Golf is not played in a net. No, I know that. I know that. I just, you know, this weekend was just really, it was a tough weekend. It's Mother's Day weekend. <laughs> Am I going to hear this same story? No. I know. I get, I, get, I, get the, I get the Mother's Day thing. I totally get that. Obviously, yeah, I was I was doing the same. So, you know, happy belated Mother's Day to all the Mother's Day outs. Mother's exactly. Day. Well, Mother's look at my, well. my wife. I, you know, we had an opportunity on Sunday. There was nothing going on. So we jumped in the car uh, after breakfast and we went to Home Depot to the garden centers and you know we probably actually haven't spent a like a full day just the two of us out running around doing stuff and the, you know, date to home depot very nice wow what do you want you know, <laughs> I mean, she likes the garden centers i mean we were particularly right, looking for something but you know it is right. what it is anyway we could go on and on about that stuff but this is a golf podcast. It is the Flagstick Podcast. So we have another awesome show this week. I'm going to say that every week. We have another awesome show. We have another awesome show because I think we're always going to have an awesome show. At least in our mind, it's going to be an awesome show. We'll, we'll be trying to, for sure. Exactly. Uh, we got some great discussions coming ahead on the front nine with uh, a number of Canadian golf stories. There's quite a few on our sort of list of, of yeah. uh, hopeful discussion points. Um, we also have uh, on the back nine... Uh, Kevin Hames is going to talk to us about uh, some pitching. Um, we've got a little product watch talk that's a little, uh, call it a little off the wall, if you will. Um, and we'll leave we'll leave the little teaser there. It's probably not as as off the wall as it might have been no. five years ago, but a um, little teaser there. And uh, we've got a great interview uh, that you brought back with you from, uh, from your media day at the RBC Canadian Open with uh, Brian Crawford. And, uh, and that's going to be a great interview. So you, you're not going to want to miss any of that, the front nine or the back nine. Um, but let's get to the front nine because that's how it all begins. Presented once again by Metcalf Golf Club, a natural setting, a pleasant challenge. Looking for fun golf at a great rate. Save 15% when you prepay. Visit MetcalfGolf.com to book. All right, Scott, diving yes. into the front nine. Pegging the ground, ball on the tee, taking a swing down the middle. Let's talk CJGA, OVGA. Yeah, we actually, uh, you know, tournament season has started. It yes, really it has, has. So, which is nice to see uh, as much as some of the people said, hey, I'm not really prepared to play tournaments. But guess what? The tournament dates are here. And uh, our Joe McLean was out at the, uh, the Canadian on the weekend. Uh, it was the first event of the year for the OVGA. After a two year break because of COVID-19, uh, they played the OVGA Spring Classic, which was also a qualifier for the Optimist and the Ontario uh, Spring Classic. 
uh, 75 junior golfers out there playing, uh, not just from the Ottawa region. Some were came in from, you know, Toronto and Quebec as well. Uh, great to see seven winners. Uh, I'll name them off just cause you know, I can sure. Uh, but you know, you can check the website for, uh, for more details. If you want to hear more about that. Uh, Bantam girls, uh, was Grace Lynn Zhao from uh, river Meat golf club. Juvenile girls was Sophie folds from Royal Ottawa golf club. Junior girls winner was Alexandra, Nagano or Nogayo, sorry, from the Ladies Golf Club of Toronto. Uh, and over on the boys' side, Pee Wee Boys, Carson Hurlbert from Camelot Golf and Country Club was the winner. Uh, Batham Boys, Chase Jerome of Royal Ottawa was the, the top player there. Juvenile Boys winner was Henry Dow of Richelieu Valley Golf Club, just outside uh, Montreal. And the Junior Boys champion was Luke Antoine DeSalle from Royal Ottawa Golf Club in a playoff. So uh, great to see. Uh, uh, great to see the tournament season yeah. getting underway. And obviously, you know, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but we've got a tournament coming up in just two weeks as well. Lots I know. Days. Yes. So we'll yeah. save that for, we'll save that for much later in the show. I think to give yeah. everybody an update on the, uh, on the flagstick open, but uh, uh, some other great things happening. National women's team uh, coach uh, was named and, yes. uh, and um, who do we got there? Yeah, Salima Mosani was named the coach. Salima has uh, been an assistant uh, with the program for a while. Uh, if people are not familiar with Salima, back in 2008, she won a um, Canadian Women's Tour event at Ottawa Hunt and Golf Club, shooting 66-66 there. She went on to sting di distinguish herself at Stanford University as a player, uh, became a coach there. Uh, got into the coaching side of things even though she's from Burlington Ontario she uh, ended up living out west out in uh, British Columbia uh, been part of that program for a while but she's been named the head coach for the national women's team Tristan Mullally who's been the longtime women's coach is moving over to a new role in player identification which is um, super important for this program it's it's really uh, the program is growing. There's more players involved in the national team program. In fact, uh, I spent nine holes yesterday with Kevin Blue, who's the high performance director for Golf Canada. Uh, we had a fair number of discussions about the national team program and the expanding things they are doing with the coaching programs here in Canada. Uh, as I said, getting more coaches involved, getting more players involved and really building a system that is going to uh, allow players to excel uh, and reach their potential better than maybe, um, you know, maybe in the past, as far as some of the opportunities they had available to them. Cool. That's awesome. Now, uh, one of the big events coming up in, in uh, later this summer in the Ottawa area is the CP women's open and, uh, uh, returning to the uh, to the hunt club um, and you know there's always going to be players in the field that are going to be a, a you know an attraction Anna Davis was added to the field mm, uh, yeah. for the CP uh, women's open tell us about that yeah so that's a uh, a nice addition obviously uh, you know being one of the biggest persons on tour and, and a highly respected uh, event uh, you're always getting the top professional players in the world coming to this championship uh, and in fact, again, same thing. Lots of people I saw yesterday, Ryan Paul, who's the tournament director, uh, very excited to get to Ottawa and get things going here. But they have added Anna Davis. And if people are not familiar with Anna, uh, she was the winner this year, the Augusta National Women's Amateur, uh, just a teen still, uh, just made her first LPGA start and made her cut uh, as an amateur. Nice addition to the field. Certainly will add a little bit of different variety uh, to the players out there. I mean, I'm sure some people may be familiar with her bucket hats and she is a lefty mm -hmm. so that's nice for her to come to Canada as yes. well she'll probably get a lot of lefty love uh with that so another exciting player uh for uh, the fans to get out and see which I I'm sure uh you know and again talking to a number of Golf Canada officials yesterday uh talking about coming to the um to the Ottawa area the National Capital area it's unbelievable the engagement that's here um you know in the past there's been over 1400 volunteers but i think they have over 2000 uh, this year coming it's insane. Uh, the record uh record attendance uh last time it was held here and they're expecting just the same and obviously you know with brooke henderson uh sort of headlining that being that she's you know from smith falls not far away and she's an honorary uh member at the ottawa hunt and golf club so having anna davis there will be a nice touch and another link uh, for this country uh, uh, with the Augusta National Golf Club, which is nice. 
Yeah, no, it's uh, it, it's great. I mean, this, uh, yeah, I mean, we all remember the last time that the CP Women's Open was here and the mass swarms of people that were out mm. there and to think that there would be even more. And thank goodness that this is that this is happening sort of, you know, I say post COVID, but maybe it isn't post COVID, but yeah, at least yeah. at least it's that normal, that sense of normalcy uh, that we're getting back to and, and to see the droves of fans that are going to be out there watching these ladies play. And, uh, and, and if anybody has never been to, uh, you know, a professional golf event, let alone an LPGA uh, mm -hmm. event, uh, this is good golf. Like oh, don't yeah. kid yourself. Don't kid yourself. The shot making that you'll see, uh, they hit it, uh, they hit it long. Uh, they hit it, uh, they hit it good and uh fantastic player so very exciting golf to watch so uh when yeah. uh when you get your opportunity to get tickets for that uh and when the event gets here get out there well we'll have updates on the cp women's open as we get closer and closer obviously some of the details are still pouring in and there are more and more details will be pouring as we get going now yes i may not have had the opportunity to play yet on a golf course but much like yourself playing or otherwise um we still make our rounds uh, you know, we do. And so we, we, we get out, we see what's going on. And now I've since pulled the, the course openings, uh, um, link off the front page of the website to make room for some other stuff that are, that's up there, but, um, mainly because most of the courses at this point are now open. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, you're seeing some things much like I'm seeing some things out there that are, you know, we're getting there now. This week should be a, a major turn once once this uh, this episode of the podcast is is out there. Um, you know, more and more courses will be open and, and changing the rules. But uh, some courses are still a little bit wet. The rain, you know, and and carts are a little slow to get out. Eh? Yeah, you know, just uh, getting out to see a few people, a few managers at some other clubs, uh, having some discussions with some club professionals out there. Um, Getting there, courses obviously you're not 100 shape yet, which you don't expect. It's very early no. May. Welcome to Canada. Um, but <laughs> expectations uh, lower than people, right? Lower <laughs> than yeah. But now that uh, now that the warm weather is here, like I said, carts getting out. You know, a couple of managers uh, at some public facilities mentioned that there was some weakness in the t sheets um, in some areas, just due to slope, uh, just due to the weather more than anything. I mean, you know. It was a bright weekend, but you know, Saturday morning was pretty brisk. I don't know how yeah. it was there, but it was brisk here, down yeah. here on Lake Ontario. Uh, as I said to one pro, I'm like, How was your outdoor? How are your outdoor lessons today? And he's like, I was wearing four leers and looking for a fifth. So, um, two cart mitts and a parka. Yeah. So, hey, thankfully that is uh, hopefully behind us and we've got some sunshine and things ahead and it's full speed ahead for most golf courses. Uh, as you mentioned, most of them open now, uh, even up into the upper Ottawa Valley. Uh, our calendar is still online. I'm still updating it when, yeah. when uh, I have a few dates there, but in most cases, all the golf courses are open. Beautiful. Now, when we were making our notes for some things to talk about uh, with respect to news and, and golf news, when I saw this name on a list, I, was like, <laughs> I just, it's funny because some, some names have come across over the years. I mean, we've, we've seen pretty much everybody if from yeah. the, the time, you know, because we've been doing this for so long, like guys like Lee Curry and Brad Fritch and that are, you know, full grown adults who played professional golf and, <laughs> You know, and remembering them when they were uh, juniors. I'll, I'll, I'll share Brad, and I'm still not sure if he's a full grown adult. But oh. yeah, I mean. <laughs> physically, yes. Mentally, yeah. I heard him on the radio on, on TSN uh, oh. TSN 1200 the other day. He's actually a pretty good sports radio host. He he's, is. He certainly yeah. has a golfer. He knows his hockey. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, this name kind of kind of came up, and it just like I'm like my God. I remember when this kid was like a just kid, a kid, and <laughs> yeah. and Jamal Musawi. Yeah, um, it was uh, recently named the athlete of the year for St. Lawrence Surge. So uh, he's down in Kingston. So you know mm -hmm. him a lot, a lot better than the whole family. Um, yeah, you know. And uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about what what that uh, being named the athlete of the year for St. Lawrence Surge is all about? 
Yeah, so uh, Jamal, obviously we're familiar with uh, Jamal, and, uh, Jamal and his brother Assad. They played in our tournaments for many years. Uh, their dad, Jack, is obviously, uh, you know, somebody we've known for quite some time. Yes. Uh, busy, busy golf family. But, uh, you know, Jamal went to uh, St. Lawrence College uh, and, you know, he's been a standout golfer there. He's done quite well, not only on the uh, Ontario level, but also at the national level as well. Um, you know, gathered more than a few medals. And the neat part for this award is the fact that uh he's being named the athlete of the year not the golfer of the year the athlete of the year yeah. uh for the saint lawrence surge and you know that's sort of a, a big distinction for golfers at most uh post-secondary in institutions because you know golfers generally don't get a lot of the uh publicity and the play no love no, no love, love for the golf yeah it's usually the other sports so uh you know i, I think jamal was quite excited about the this award and i know a lot of people were for him as well you know he works hard on his game likes his game game uh, has a very engaging personality yeah. so we should yes. say he's, yeah. he's been he's, it's been fun to have him at the flagstick open uh over the years and again you know i i look back it's i think i have a photo from the ontario mid amateur uh, where he was caddying for jeff crow uh and they had a, like a homemade jersey on him and it was at loyalist and it probably was you know 2008 maybe yeah um so it's neat to see how these uh young golfers grow up and uh, congratulations to jamal and on, on being recognized as the athlete of the year for the saint lawrence college surge way to go jamal now jamal i'm yes. looking at the the flagstick open roster i know for this year where are you at jamal <laughs> he didn't get in the field i don't think no he's probably, he work, he's probably <laughs> working he works hard work work hard on getting into the flagstick open jamal we want to have i know you play he played in it back and i think he actually won he won gosh, i think flights? it was b or c yeah. flight i mean yeah. which is yeah, which yeah, is yeah. crazy to think of you know years ago but Maybe you don't come back and defend that uh, division, Jamal, but you can come and uh, and challenge for the overall title. Anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah, but remember Jamal and his brother Assad when they were like just junior golfers, you know, kicking it around. Um, and uh, speaking of junior golfers, uh, yes. one of the uh, one of the most awesome junior golf tournaments in the region uh, for many years now is uh, the Loyalist Junior Showcase. My son Brandon played in it one year, way way back when he first started playing golf, um, an awesome, awesome weekend of junior golf for the, for the kids and, and right down in your neck of the woods again, down at the Loyalist Country Club. Yeah, so the uh, Junior Showcase is set to be played this weekend. Uh, busy field, for what I've been told. Lots of players are signed up. It's also a qualifier as well for the Road to TPC, which is an event that just started a, a couple years ago involving the uh, uh, TPC of Toronto at Osprey Valley. So this is an opportunity not only for the players to, you know, to get some reps in early in the year and we're not talking just you know hardcore competitive players they have lots of divisions here uh the idea is it's a low cost event uh, players can get some experience the youngest golfers they have walking scores that go out with them um, they really introduce them to competitive golf but you know it is a qualifier for this uh event at tpc the opportunity here is that the players can you know win their division qualify and they basically uh get paid entry into the event in toronto get to play a golf course that uh you know has hosted the uh the canadian tour um lots of great prizes and so forth lots of great support at that event i know players that have gone you know they've won shoes golf clubs all sorts of different things get to play on a you know a world-class golf course for sure um but yeah the showcase is great uh you know jeff james uh austin james the whole team down there you know and they get a lot of support from a lot of people um for this event and right rightfully so uh and uh i know of more than a few young players that are going to be in it this weekend and uh it should be good uh friday saturday and sunday awesome Awesome. Now, this last thing on our list to talk about before we before we finish up uh, our front nine here, um, you're going to have to take the bull by the horns on this one with uh, with respect to your Sunday night. Survey. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have no. I'm looking at a Sunday night survey, and I'm like, what the what heck is that? <laughs> is this all about? So explain, well, Mr. McLeod. Explain. Yeah. Well, you know what? I was sitting in uh, in a hotel room, and uh, you know, I got to thinking. You know, of, of course, you know, I bring my golf clubs in. You know, I, yes. I, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter where we're at. 
Uh, and I think I started to do that not from a security standpoint. It was more because, you know, you can putt and you can play around and things like that. But eventually- Dipping became, and putting in the hotel room. Right. But eventually it became more of a security thing. You want to take your clubs out there. Because obviously if you're on a golf trip yes. and something happens, one, it's a pain in the butt. It's going to interrupt your, your uh, trip. Uh, the other side of it, you know, golf clubs are expensive. So yeah. you're know, having to replace them. So I just threw out a quick- Sunday night survey, as I called it, just on Twitter, uh, and just said, boom, hey, when traveling for golf, do you bring your golf clubs into the hotel room or leave them in the vehicle? Now, one of the funniest first responses I got was from the aforementioned Brad Fritch. Oh, my who gosh. Basically, who basically put the words in there with dots in between saying, do not leave them in the hotel room. And I certainly heard more than a few horror stories from people about cars getting broken into and clubs getting stolen and all sorts. Had one guy said, hey, well, how do you get new golf clubs then? You know, obviously referring to, you know, having them replaced by insurance or, or you know, getting new clubs after that. Uh, I will tell you there was 330. 34 votes that came in 81% said in the room 13% said in the vehicle and 6% said it varies I guess depending on the situation there is no there's there's I can't even imagine a situation that I would leave them in the car I remember we had yeah. uh, one of our trips way 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 back in the day uh, back in the old retail golf shop days and we were in, um, I think it was in Orlando. Yes. And we didn't leave the clubs in the car, but we mm -hmm. left some winter coats because obviously we'd driven all the way down there. We left CDs. winter coats, CDs, and what happened? Yeah, car got broken into. Car gets broken into. Got stolen. And some of those CDs were yours, and they're irreplaceable. Um you know, sad. oh, don't be sad, please. Don't you make me There's feel CDs. bad. CDs, I'm not missing CDs. No, 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 at this not, point. not nowadays. Um, yeah. But uh, I don't think there's, I mean, I remember even when we went to trip to, trip to Nova Scotia that one time where we stayed over in, uh, in Dartmouth. Yeah. And we had a room right outside where the vehicle was, like a sliding glass door that we could go in and out. And we, even that night, we, we yeah. like unloaded the whole vehicle. Yeah. You know, I, I can see it if you're in some remote locations, like if you remember some of the trips we did to like, you know, Tennessee <laughs> or so forth, you know, <laughs> back in the backwoods where you were scared to get out of the vehicle. Jason, <laughs> Jason Boris, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know, in those situations, you're so remote. I mean, who's going to steal your golf clubs, a raccoon? I mean, you know, Jason. nothing's good. Nothing's good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I could see it maybe in that situation, but, you know, it would be pretty rare. That's for sure. All right. Well, that concludes us. Uh, concludes our our. Oh, wait a minute. Wait. Oh, oh, oh no, oh. it doesn't. We should have two more here. I okay. Got two, two more for you here. Okay. Uh, they, that are important. Bring <clears> it. The, the Ottawa Valley Golf Association yes. uh, named their Hall of Fame inductees for 2022. Okay, okay. Top, top of the list there as far as the inductees. Uh, you can find more information about that on flagstick.com. I will tell you that uh, Davey Black, Lee Curry, Graham Gunn, uh, Andy Neeson, Bonnie Wolf, Mary Drummy, and John Holtzman were the inductees for 2022. So if you want more details on that, obviously yeah. jump to flagstick.com. And the last note here for this week is the, um, which leads perfectly into what we're about to talk about. <laughs> uh, the RBC Canadian Open had their first of their four regional qualifiers. They have one in Quebec, Ontario, BC, and they added one this year in Alberta. They had their very first one yesterday. Okay. Uh, they did not have 100 players, uh, which they would need for a direct spot into the tournament, um, but they had enough so that the top eight players and ties will advance to the Monday qualifier, uh, which is going to be at Oakdale in Toronto. This was held at uh, Blaine Villiers in a, a golf club in Blainville, Quebec yesterday. And I will note without telling you everything, and you can go look at our tweets if you want to see them, and I'll have something up on flagstick.com soon. Uh, within that top eight, uh, Jake Bryson from Dunrobin, Ontario, was tied for fifth and got through to the Monday qualifiers. Nice. So, uh, we'll let you know that one. If you want to know the rest of the names, have a look at our Twitter account. And I've got a post up there, and I'll throw something up on flagstick.com as well. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, we're going to have to take a break. Uh, Scott and I'll be back with uh, a pitching tip from Kevin Haim and uh, an interview with Brian Crawford uh, with the RBC Canadian Open, plus a little bit of speaker talk. All that and more on the back nine when we get back on Flagstick Podcast. Stay with us. Over the past 40 years, 
you've inspired us to make a lot of great drivers. All great, but all eventually reach their limit. But while we were making all these drivers for the present, we were also hard at work making the next generation of driver. Because where titanium ends, carbon begins. And we are back uh, with another uh, another step on to the tee and back into the and into the back nine presented uh, by Golf Sim Gurus. Work on your game all year round in the privacy of your own home. Custom golf simulator setups built to your specs and to fit your budget. Visit GolfSimGurus.ca to learn more. Um, okay, so Scott, yesterday. Mm -hmm. You had the opportunity to go and participate in the RBC Canadian Open Media Day for the first time in, in a while. And uh, I did not. Unfortunately, I could not make it. But um, as part of that, you also had the opportunity to converse and sit down and chat with uh, various people. And you had an opportunity to sit down um, with uh, Brian Crawford and have a little chat. So uh, why don't you set that up for us? Yeah, so uh, obviously there's a lot of people around for the RBC Media Day uh, for the uh, Canadian Open. Uh, great time up there again, as you mentioned. Uh, nice to have the tournament back after a couple of years, which, uh, you know, has done a few things for them. It has actually uh, given them some time to sort of think about the event and things that they can do to make it better. Uh, and as you mentioned, I had a chance to sit down with uh, Brian Crawford, who is the tournament director uh, for the RBC Canadian Open. And we chatted a little bit about the infrastructure that we see going on on at St. George's right now as they get ready and less than a month away uh, from the Canadian Open and a little bit about what goes into the event, some things that they've changed over the last couple of years and what people can expect this year uh, out of an event that they say will be the greatest one yet. Wow. Okay. Well, then uh, without further ado, everybody have a listen to this interview that Scott had with Brian Crawford, Tournament Director of the RBC Canadian Open. All right, we're here with Brian Crawford, who's the tournament director for the RBC Canadian Open. We are at St. George's for the RBC Canadian Open Media Day. Brian, first off, why don't you give us a little update how things are looking 28 days out from the tournament? <laughs> things are looking great. We're, um, we've been moving along at a really, really good pace. Uh, we actually got uh, a couple weeks under our belts before Christmas time, at the end of November, beginning of December, to get a little head start, and then we're able to... Um, get going in the uh, third week of March so the uh, winter cooperated with us and allowed us to get going and get working so it's a big process uh, biggest build we've ever undertaken so to be able to get a few of those extra weeks really made a big difference and it put us in a really good place uh, now so uh, as you saw today that there's a lot of things out there and but uh, a lot of work still to still to do but very much on schedule, which is the most important part. Yeah, I think most people don't maybe understand what the infrastructure is like for one of these events and what's involved. Can you maybe give us an idea as far as, you know, man hours maybe put into how many people are involved putting this together i mean there's a yeah. lot there's a lot to take in more than i even saw here in 2010 obviously it's bigger than what it was back then yeah so about 15 weeks of uh, build time we we work uh, six days a week and the last you know week or two will be you know seven days a week and uh there is 210,000 square feet of uh, space that's been constructed um, for hospitality and uh, general missions fans and activation spaces. Uh, there is over 6,800 pieces of furnishing that, uh, that get put out here, which is none of that's here yet. That'll all, that'll be uh, all coming and, you know, kilometers and kilometers and kilometers of bunting and signage and, and all those sorts of uh, sorts of things. So we have a, we have a small kind of operations team of seven and then we have kind of sales and partnerships and marketing people. And then, uh, you know, several dozen uh, people that work for each of our suppliers. So, you know, there's several hundred people at the end of the day that, uh, you know, are all involved in, in this whole circus that we build. <laughs> well, you mentioned, uh, obviously, the, you know, there's been a two year break for the RBC Canadian Open. And, you know, that's given you some time to look at the infrastructure of the events and some different plans of, you know, what you could do maybe better. Or um, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? You mentioned some things about the app, for an mm. example. Uh, what are the things that maybe you discovered along the way within those couple of years that, Oh, you had the opportunity to, to be able to take advantage of that time to, to do something better and improve the Canadian Open. Yeah, it's an interesting kind of balance between, you know, what we've been able to implement right away, what are is for future years, because we had had, you know, developed plans and we're, you know, three months away from delivering the event back in 20. 
Um, so, you know, we really took the opportunity. We, we did uh, quite a big study on fans. We did quite a big study on volunteers and looked at, you know, our colleague tournaments across the PGA Tour, <clears throat> looked at um, events uh, kind of across Canada and, you know, how they run their volunteer programs. And we learned a lot from that. We started to implement a number of those kind of improvements and enhancements uh, for this year and, and for future events. Uh, you know, we had a great kind of head start on hospitality and had all that time to, you know, kind of sell and grow and, and had, you know, this demand that allowed us um, to grow. So we had to look at other creative ways to, you know, expand, you know, with the f footprint that we have to work sure. with here, which yeah. is, you know, obviously it's a city golf course and, you know, land is at a premium uh, uh, here. So, you know, those are some of the sorts of things that, that we started to do. You know, the app was, is a big one that kind of came on um, coming out of 20 and with our kind of plans to, you know, digitize the event and, and you know, invest in technology as an organization uh, with the growth of the Golf Canada app. Uh, so, you know, those are all kind of some of the pieces that, uh, you know, came out of that, that break and that opportunity to also, you know, reevaluate your plans and think about them and, and then things that changed in, you know, Ooh. places that, you know, you maybe had access to before that maybe we don't now or, you know, people change and, and, and the um, circumstances change. And so it's amazing kind of the differences from, you know, just what we would have done two years ago to what we're you know, now doing today. Well, obviously the tournament took a, a big turn in, in 2019 and really took on more of a festival type atmosphere, obviously uh, with RBC and the partnership with the music, with the concerts and, and everything and so forth. Obviously the field's gotten stronger and stronger. Uh, announcements today that, you know, Matt Fitzpatrick and uh, Tony Finau were added uh, to the field, Cam Smith as well. You know, spectators have a lot to look forward to here as far as the quality of field and that adding to the excitement of the event. How does it make you feel as a, you know, tournament director to be able to look down that list and see such a strong field coming here to Canada well it, it makes you feel uh, great I mean we are very fortunate you know in the title partner that we have at RBC and team RBC and that is a great home field advantage uh, partnered with our Canadians that are capable of winning every single week on the tour so that alone is you know a huge leg up and then to be able to add you know top players in the world like you mentioned like Scotty and Cam and Rory who's you know our defending champion uh, and having Dustin the defending champion prior to that I mean you know you can't can't ask for more than that um you know so th those things you know it makes me excited for golf fans that you know you get to come out and and be part of that and and knowing everything else that we have to offer you know from our recipe unlimited fairway the food and you know food and beverage experience and all of the partner activations and all of the things that we have uh, operating in our fairway which is our, our name for our fan village the sure. fairway um <clears throat> you know a small stage in there that'll have programming before golf uh, excuse me after golf before the concerts uh, and then, you know, the RBCX Music Concert Series. I, you know, I challenge anyone to find uh, more value uh, in the sport and entertainment uh, space than the RBC Canadian Open offers. You know, you can spend, you know, literally 12, 15 hours here. <laughs> True. Um, and, you know, not only get world-class, you know, sport, but then to have world-class entertainment and music on top of that. And as I said, the, all the other pieces of all the other things that are happening that, you know, we sometimes, you know, don't even spend as much time talking about because maybe they're not as huge as right. some of these other elements um, so it's you know and I always kind of say and I'm you know I have a, a young family and we're a tremendous value for for families um, you know kids are free you know, can you go to any other sporting event where kids are free where we've got you know a family care station that you know they can go and get a break from the sun and and have uh, private washrooms and you know place to change or, or, or feed uh, young children and um, you know those are things fan acti activations across the course the, the uh, first tee Canada game changers pavilion with all of the uh, acts, um, you know um, pieces that they're going to deliver as well so um, <clears throat> you know autograph zones and you know all the sorts of things that are great for kids you know I have uh, twins that are nine and, and a daughter that's uh, five and you know I you know they are super excited to be here there's stuff for them to do all day long and 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 enjoy so you know we're that's something that you know I'm particularly proud of that you know we really are you know living up to the sport being for everyone right it's really truly probably the only sport that really is for everyone you know my 98 year old grandfather will be here to enjoy it and you know my Could five be at the flow rider daughter. concert i'm sure you know <laughs> you, you might be right up front of flow rider <laughs> that's amazing well thank you really appreciate it and uh best of luck as uh, you get uh in the last days in here and getting ready for the uh 2022 rbc much. canadian open thank you well scott it's a lot of uh a lot of very uh 
very good information that came out of that interview. Uh, what a what a sit down, what a chat. Um, that yeah. must have been must have been quite enlightening just to to be able to kind of get some some insight as to uh, what they've been working on on uh, making happen uh, with this yeah. year's event. Yeah, it's been interesting, you know, just going around the property there at uh, St. George's yesterday, um, you know, quite different in the infrastructure that they built there versus what was there in 2010 when the event was there. Uh, certainly the RBC Canadian Open has, you know, gotten to a grander scale. Uh, and as you heard there with Brian, you know, laying out some of the details of the infrastructure and what's being put into it and, and uh, you know, the process of getting that event ready, uh, I think people, you know, once they hear those details, they yeah. go, hmm, maybe, maybe I should be up there or, or getting some tickets. Uh, I will say, you know, uh, things like hospitality and VIP tickets are already sold out. Uh, there's still some daily tickets and things that are available. Not sure what the status is uh, for the Friday and Saturday uh, tickets, which would also include the uh, obligatory concerts that are available that night. Friday mm -hmm. night uh, gets you into the Flow Rider concert, and Saturday night gets you into the Maroon 5 concert that they nice. have. Uh, uh, nearby as well so i mean it's it's shaping up to be a, a heck of a week and uh you know just a huge celebration of canadian golf and and really you know what's happened to the game in the last couple of years and uh, 2019 as i mentioned in the interview was you know huge for um canada rory mcelroy winning at uh, hamilton golf and country club that was the first time that they had the concerts it, it really there was a huge buzz about the event yeah. and, and i think uh you know what brian said there about you know how they're getting ready and what their expectations are and how they've ramped things up even more uh, i think is uh, just great for canadian golf in general perfect that is perfect well the one thing scott that is for certain is that if you want to make it into the field at the rbc canadian open in the future in your future uh, you may need a lot of help uh, may yeah. need a lot of help from from a golf pro um, but you know what let's start by checking out this week's lesson T with Kevin Haim. Uh, it's time for it's time to hit to the lesson T on the Flagstick Podcast, uh, brought to you by Kevin Haim Golf School. It's always the right time to play better, whether you need private lessons, better short games, some putting help, or even some custom club fitting. Visit kevinhaim.com and remember that better golf is a lot more fun. This week, Kevin is going to help you out with your pitching. So let's take a look at this or a listen at this. Okay, we're in our 3D motion capture studio and we're going to do something a little different today in here. We're going to hit a pitch shot and uh, Jake and I want to explain to you how this works. Jake, my tech expert back here. Jake, when we teach people how to pitch the golf ball, what's, what, what do you think is the most common thing they do wrong? Uh, I think people don't use their body enough or correctly because they're too weird about keeping their head down and hitting the ball with their arms and hands for a pitch shot. Yeah, you got it, man. Bingo. So everyone keeps their head locked down and thinks waving their arms back and forth will, will make them more consistent. But that leads to too much wrist action, no weight flow, and no body movement. And you need body movement in sports. So I'm going to hit a little shot here, everyone. 40-yard shot, a pitch shot. And if you watch great pitchers of the ball like Tiger Woods, you're going to see some body movement and quieter wrists and hands. They're relaxed. There's a little bit of motion in them, but... They're not really wristy and armsy and, and waving their club back and forth. So let me uh, hit a little shot. Jake, I'm going to hit 40 yards, okay? I'm going to try 40 yards. Yeah, let's do it. We got that golf ball under my lead eye. All my lines look pretty clean there. You look good. Good. Okay, so a little rib high to rib high 40-yard golf shot. Here we go. There we go. That felt about 40, Jake. That's how I typically pitch a ball near the green. So let's look at that data now and see if we can come up with exactly what happened on it. Well, the good news is he hit it 41.86 yards, so he did a pretty good job. Not bad. So I've got a six-foot putt coming back. I've got a little two-yard putt coming back. That's great. Uh, unless it's, it's a steep slope, Jake. Then I got a downhiller, a tough that's, bird. That's, that's a good point. But anyway, 40-yard shot, so there we go. So let's look at what I did. I, I want body motion, quiet arms and wrists. So let's bring me back to halfway back, which is you know, my full backswing there and see what happened. Yeah, so as you turn your chest and hit your little four-yard shot. Yeah, so hold on to that. People could see my uh, my lead hands there just above my belt line, right? A little, little partial shot. How much have I turned my wrist there, Jake? I'm sorry, not my wrist, my uh, shoulders. So at this point, you've already turned your chest about 45 degrees. 
which would explain to everybody how body driven this motion is. As the chest turns early in the swing, that's what gets you going in the right path and brings the club up to what we'll consider your top of backswing on yeah, such a small Lovely, shot. and then, okay, a little half backswing, a little pitch shot here. We're pitching it on the green 40 yards away. Let's turn through it and see what it looks like at the finish, Jake. So I'm moving on to my lead leg, and I rotate. My head continues to rotate with my body, and it's just a nice, quiet little pitch motion. But, oh my goodness, my, I, I'm 120 degrees, or, or I'm 100 degrees around, Jake, my chest, so I'm more than facing the target. I'm actually past that, just on a little shot. Agreed. And, and, Isn't I mean, that cool? This should make sense, everybody. If you turn your chest and use your body rotation to hit the golf shot, your hands can be more quiet, which means your face can be more square throughout the shot. You can release more athletically and naturally and allow the club to do the work. So we see it's a very common thing with great pitchers of the golf ball that they'll have a large amount of turn in their chest and their backswing. And then as they move through the ball, they release completely to their target and allow the club to gather the ball. Good work, Jake. Great numbers there, everyone. So you can see what happens. I let my head go. I let my body move. And I actually, it's like a little underhanded throwing motion. And it leads to better pitch shots. Try it next time you're practicing. Well, um, I don't know if these tips will certainly help my game because I don't practice enough. But if you practice enough, these tips will definitely help you. That one's a, that one's rather a, a good one. Talking about uh, you know the body motion during yeah. uh, uh, during your pitching um, and how that might help you lower your scores. Yeah, you know, especially this time of year, uh, it's important for people to get out and get on grass. A lot of people have maybe been practicing indoors off of AstroTurf or turf. Uh, not quite the same uh, as going out there and, and practicing your pitching off of grass. And generally, your ball striking is not going to be as good this time of year. So you're going to have <laughs> to get up and down more. So, yeah. you know, having a better body movement there to really aid your pitching, certainly important. And uh, not only to take in uh, the advice there that Kevin has, but to implement it as you well go and practice well yeah uh, i know i used to take a block of uh, uh a block of wood or even i used to take like three golf balls and i'd put them under underneath the right side of my right foot because as we know i like to sway and, and mm -hmm. we talked about on one of one of kevin's other tips about body motion and and that helped me keep my weight more to my left side uh which gave me a, a much better strike much a crisper strike on my on my my pitching and my chipping because then you eliminate the movement but um you know uh take the time to practice this stuff people and yeah. uh these tips are quick they're simple easy to listen to um you know when you're on the range and follow and uh they could help you i'm not going to guarantee they're going to help you but they certainly could help you yep put in the time put in the time and yes. uh, you know that's the only way that uh, you're going to get better exactly put in the time all right uh it's time for another uh another segment of product watch something a little different uh this week but uh, product watch is uh, is brought to you uh once again this week by greensmere golf and country club save 40 percent on all daily green fee rates with flex pass for only 425 dollars plus tax visit greensmere.com for more info or to get your flex pass all right now when we come up with these product watch sometimes it's a product that we want to talk about a specific product and we've got details you know we got a little bit of the sell sheet on it and whatnot um but i, I wanted to do something you know when we were, I were talking about products for this week i wanted to do something a little bit different in that um this is less about a specific product and more about a category of product that seems to be becoming more and more popular and i i know it's not new this is not, oh my gosh, this is brand new this year. Can you believe it? Uh, we got to get this. But it's something that has gradually become more and more popular in, mm -hmm. in the golf arena, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and that's uh, th these golf speakers, these, these uh, Bluetooth or wireless speakers uh, that people seem to have. Um, you know, everybody seems to have them. And, and just seeing more and more of them come up, uh, crop up. Uh, you know, in particular, we talked about the Blue Tees Rangefinder. Um, on the last episode of the podcast and then i just happened to be sort of doing a little bit of uh, internet uh, golf world searching and, and some sleuthing and yeah some <laughs> sleuthing um my sherlock put my sherlock holmes ad on but uh blue yeah. tees actually has a uh, just introduced actually just yeah. introduced a speaker and that yeah. got me sort of you know because it was top yeah. of mind got me thinking oh, i wonder you know what do these things what features do these things have mm -hmm. that are and man oh man when i started going and looking at it uh it was crazy 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this category has grown and, and it's just really an offshoot of, you know, lifestyle products that are out there. Uh, you know, Bluetooth speakers obviously became more common in, you know, other parts of life, people just taking them outside, going different places, you know, um, just having them around the house, obviously much easier than having, uh, you know, uh, attached to the old style speaker systems. You just, you know, sync it to your <laughs> phone. Since most people are listening to a lot of their music through their phone anyways, mm-hmm. uh, you know, streaming services, so forth. And, and that's carried over to the golf course. I mean, uh, again, you know, there's a lot of controversy early on. I can remember being, you know, at an event years ago where people were like, you know, they're really getting up in arms as far as hearing the music out there. Um, you know, we can have another debate or discussion about that. But obviously, if you can hear the music only within your group or in your cart, that's probably an acceptable level. Yeah, you don't, necessarily, don't necessarily need it blasting so that everybody you're interfering with other people's time. I mean, it's good enough to have, you know, it's good to have, um, you know, a good time within your group as long as you're not interfering with other people. Um, so, but this has become more common because, you know, again, golf is an entertainment type thing. And I know I've done this with my own daughter, brought a speaker out. I'll just usually put it in the cup holder of our push card or wherever like that, play it kind of low key. Um, it's not very loud, but it's just kind of another element. Some people don't want that. Some people want to go away from everything and, and not have that. And they certainly have the right to do that, but that's not going to negate the fact that there are going to be more and more golf specific products, which obviously start to blend in different features that are more golf specific than yeah. the regular speakers that are sort of out there. So a person can just take a, a normal, you know, Bluetooth speaker and take it out there. For example, I have one uh, called a wonder boom from ultimate ears, which is okay you know kind of a round shape to it kind of interesting but a little bit more blocky and it's more probably better for something around the pool or so forth it does have a lanyard on it so if you want to connect it to something but it's a little bit heavy Mm -hmm. whereas we start to look at some of these ones and the ones that you're talking about here some different ones from puma bushnell blue tees for example they definitely have things like magnetic magnetic mounts, yes. which can allow it to attach to the golf cart, which yeah. you know is obviously a great feature. Now most um, of them are most of them are are uh, waterproof or water resistant. Yeah. Some are fully waterproof. Some are water resistant. The magnetic mounts, the 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 Bushnell, the wingman that Bushnell uh, yeah. has actually has a removable remote. It does, uh, which is which is kind of cool if you're you know got the cart and you want to turn down the volume mm-hmm. or turn up the volume or switch songs or whatever well the um, other feature the other feature about the wingman which is interesting and that's even one that's even more golf related is that uh and we had the we've had the wingman i think we first featured it about uh three years ago when it first came out picks. Yeah, it was definitely, it was in our hot picks. And the neat part about integrated in that is that it has a uh, GPS yes. uh, built into it yeah. and it will actually read out your front, middle and back. Yeah, yardages. just with the push button there. Yeah, which obviously is important with, uh, you know, so that that's becomes, makes it more of a golf specific uh, exactly. speaker than some of the other ones. Yeah, I know the Puma one. I, I know I have a, I have the little Puma puck, this yep. little, the smaller one, the uh, pop one. Yeah, the pop one. Yeah, and it's got a little bottle opener. Uh, it does in the back of it. <laughs> I have, I have I mean, one what, hang. I have one hanging in the kitchen here. Actually, what, what golf accessory item shouldn't have a bottle opener? There I mean, you I go. Know, exactly. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know how many bottles you open on the golf course, but uh, JBL has one. It's a JBL clip. It's like a little got a little um, uh, carabiner clip on it right. that you, yep. you know you can clip on your bag side of your bag whatnot and long battery life on these things that i've mm. noticed too is 10 to 12 hours some of them yeah. have battery yep. life now that's yeah you know that's that's pretty awesome um, yeah for the number of rounds you know yeah. three four rounds or i think the blue tees one i saw his 13 hours so but most yeah. of them are in that same range obviously it's dependent on battery size and output more than anything exactly and i think the blue tees one i was i was looking at actually has the ability to pair units together too yes so yeah. you you multiple multiple units can pair with with uh, those speakers so um yeah and there's some cool colors and things like that like i mean mm-hmm. i'm gonna be honest i'm not i i'm all in for it like i think it's great i think mm-hmm. it's cool um but there's a courteousness to you know of course yeah you know with with the use of them and and you are on the golf course you're not the only ones out there and i have in my time uh with come into experiences with the speakers where you you get a group that'll roll up on you they're having a good time they got the music just blaring and you're on the tee and and you know the inevitable happens that it's Mm, it's distracting and it's annoying so 
if you just kind of, you know, treat it the way, you know, you do want someone rolling up on you when you're trying to hit a shot, like have some respect for the people around you. They don't have to be blared that loud for everybody in the group to hear it. You don't have right. to hear it on both sides of the fairway. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's just, and you probably want to clear it. Uh, you probably want to clear it too with, yeah. with the group. So if you're on a public golf course, for example, and you get paired up with some other people, um, you know what? It's probably best to ask, Yeah. Uh, you know, it's just common courtesy to say, Hey, do you mind or, or whatever? Um, you know, not everybody wants to sit there and listen to your, you know, hip hop full of F bombs or something like that or whatever, <laughs> or, you know, or whatever the case may Leave be. Leave the M and M at home. Uh, but you know, <laughs> Um, but you know, it, it's just, again, it's like anything else. You're just going to be polite or whatever, but I, I certainly think, you know, from an entertainment standpoint, you know, certainly people are going to, you know, they're out there to have a good time for the period of, period yeah. of time. Just, you know, as you said, just have a courtesy for other people and don't interrupt their fun, uh, yeah. just for the sake of your own fun. And especially to uh, tournaments and stuff like that, when you're in a private mm -hmm. tournament, a lot of that goes on and that's, you know, I'm cool with that. I mean, yeah. there's situations where you've got things going on on different tees where the music is blaring. When oh, you've yeah, got the golf sure. course, yeah. and that's just the way it is. It's usually scrambles, usually for charity. Nobody should be caring about score anyway in those types of events. But um, I don't think I'd be rolling out the speaker in the middle of a competitive event. And certainly say don't even try to put one of those things on during the flag stick open because I'll come <laughs> and confiscate it myself. Um, <laughs> so... Um, that said, what a, uh, it's a cool little category, something I Definitely. thought we could have a little discussion about, you know, point a few little features out and I'm yeah. sure most people know about them by now, but if you don't go check them out, go online and check them out. They're not all available at your retailers. They're not all available, uh, available to all your online golf shops. You sometimes you have to find them other places. Mm -hmm. Um, Amazon has a, has a whack of them. I know Amazon, you can get some different ones there. There was, a. Uh, rock form uh, was one that I saw there. That's a golf specific one. They they promote as golf specific. I only really saw it on on Amazon, um, which is why I wrote it down. But uh, yeah, cool little any category. Other, uh, any other ones that you spotted? Uh, Sound Caddy. Uh, oh was God, one. is that the one that looks like a golf club? Yes, and it, you know what? It, it's it, it's cool because when I saw it, I thought it was actually just attached to the head of a golf club sticking yeah. in someone's bag. And I'm looking yeah. further at it; it's actually it, it looks like a driver head. Yeah, sort of, there's, and it's there's got been a lightweight a, plastic yeah. uh, shaft. You just yeah. stick it in your golf bag like a club. Now, does yeah. that count as a club? Like, if no. you have that in there, is that a 15th club? No, no, no. And oh. and the, and there's been a couple of those that are like that. Obviously, it's pretty cool I, looking though. I gotta I guess. Say. I mean, yeah. You know, you, I mean, you gotta it, find it your seems... marketing niche, right? <laughs> right, but it seems a little large to fit it in there with your golf clubs as it is when, you know, I guess it's a little, I don't know, it's a little glitchy, I guess, glitchy, <laughs> whatever, I don't know what you want to call it or whatever, but, you it's know, something. It's something. I mean, really, with the size of some of the other ones, I don't think you need something that that's big sticking into your golf bag. In most cases, they're <sighs> going to be in your cup holder. They're going to be in the front part of your cart anyways. But I guess yeah. I guess maybe if you're, I mean, the good part about the ones like the little Puma one uh -huh. with the lanyard, it's super lightweight, the smaller one, it's really easy just to attach that to your golf bag. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a cart type thing. Uh, and a size is certainly important when dealing with these. Something like the Wingman wouldn't be something that you would normally carry in your bag no no and make sure pocket. you turn those things off when you're done with them because oh, yeah. uh, i i did happen to have a situation where uh my my i was playing the music was playing through the speaker when my in that basement when my phone was upstairs and i was trying to figure out where why is why I'm not where was my from? phone? It was paired with it because I left it on in the basement uh, downstairs in okay. the workout room yeah. and the speaker was playing down there i'm like oh. gotcha so make sure you turn those things off because you never know who's listening there you go Anyways, great topic. Um, last thing we want to talk about before we uh, close out another episode of the Flagstick Podcast, Scott, is just a little bit of a Flagstick open update. Yeah. Um, we are, we are, you know, I guess less than two weeks out now. Yep. Oh, dear. Um, <laughs> things Very have been cool. finalized. Just talked uh, with uh, Scott McEnroy from uh, from Equinel uh, the na last couple of days. Uh, Rich McLean, our head rules official, is heading out there on the uh, couple of days before the tournament to do all the usual marking of the course uh, mm -hmm. for the hazard uh, hazard lines with the getting the white paint and the red paint and the yellow paint out and getting after that and make sure the set things are set up. Uh, uh, the course, uh, the maintenance staff, Chris, uh, um, uh, Chris is, is uh, getting everything set up 
uh, as per usual, yeah. um, uh, as per usual flag stick open conditions. Um, mm -hmm. the, uh, the meal set, nice steak, baked potato, Caesar salad, uh, wide open this year too. Pick up your meal, go sit down. Eat yeah, with little, your buddies, order little, your little, beverages. A little different than the uh, takeaway. Uh, oh, it's gonna be years. it's gonna be nice to be back to back to the normal dinner. Uh, scorecards will be available this year, so you'll be uh, filling in your scorecards. However, we will still be uh, electronic scoring. Electronic scoring to make sure that the leaderboards are are live. Yeah. Um, so that's still going to happen, but we will have uh, paper scorecards available for everybody this year, kind of back to the tournament style of things. Um, you know, we've, we've had ins and outs, uh, happening, uh, the last week, there's been at least, uh, a dozen, uh, withdrawals from the event and a dozen people added. We still have a fairly deep waiting list. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, if you want to have a shot to get into the tournament, I know you're going to be at the very bottom of a waiting list, but the closer the event gets, even the waiting list, when we have cancellations, a lot of people that get added, don't want to take their spot because they've moved on to other things right so there's always still a chance and remember you know you register for, and you're on the waiting list there's nothing written in stone there you're not paying anything unless i put you in right um yep. so you know there's no there's no issues there um things are a little different obviously this year with the we're doing the split t uh so we'll have our our a's and b's going off of one t and we'll have our b's and our c's and d's going off uh the other set of t's so it'll be uh, off the front and the back nine crossover both days and we start later we start at 11 30 instead of uh you know our usual you know 8 30 9 o'clock so um yeah it's uh Field's looking pretty strong it's oh wow let me tell you um it's a deep field yeah uh, and our d you know our c and d flight it's not like because of what i'm going to tell you about the a flight that it means that the d flight's going to have a whole bunch of single digit indexes in it and that's not the case the rest of the field kind of does divide up the way it should divide up but our our a division as it sits right now ranges from plus 4.0 so not 4.0 no, plus, plus 4.0 down to 0.4 and that's 30 players yeah. that make up that A division as it sits right now. So our B flight is starting at 0.6. Mm. And it's, su it's super competitive. and It is. Yeah. It is. Which is why our A and B division uh, of the tournament always play off the same tees. Right. Yep. We don't switch the tees to a different uh, set of tees until we get into the C and D division. Because anybody in that B flight is capable of winning the tournament. Yep, um, yeah, for sure. You know, and that's the way it's been for quite a few years with the event. We did have a B flighter win, uh, or not win, but uh, uh, very close uh, yep. when uh, Wesley uh, uh, Wesley Kwok, um had a, I think he was sixty eight or sixty nine on the yeah, second it was day and nine under for the tournament. Yeah, yeah. yeah so and easily and one B flight. Yeah, yeah, and it's great. I mean, seeing the names there, you know, I think we've mentioned that on the show before, but you know, we've got two of the last three Ontario senior champions. Yeah. Um, Ashley Chinner is in the field, who's a you know reinstated amateur from many years ago, but has done well on the Ontario senior circuit. Uh, former winner of the PGA Championship of Canada, played a bit on the Corn Ferry Tour. Um, yeah, even yesterday, you know, playing with uh, with Kevin Blue, uh, who you know, went to college at Stanford and, you know, was getting ready to qualify for U.S. and Canadian Opens. Uh, his schedule couldn't work this year, but he's hoping to come down and play in, yeah. in the years further. Uh, further. Um, you know, it's an event now that's on, you know, his radar as well. And uh, that's pretty good. I mean, that's the the high performance director for Golf Canada, uh, you know, and he's obviously suggesting it more to, uh, you know, some of the high performance players as well to, to get down and play. It's a good time of year mm -hmm. uh, for this event prior to a lot of other uh, you know national championship for university college for an example everybody getting out and starting to play you know their full tournament schedule so um yeah you know i'm looking forward to it looking forward to being out on the first tee and uh you know saw uh, owen rig from the northern golf association yeah, yesterday <laughs> uh big big rig was at uh st george's for the canadian media day is he exactly. liking the podcast because i know he was a pretty avid yeah. listener of the 613 golfer podcast yeah. when i was doing that he is uh, obviously he spent some time on the road 
road up there as everybody does in the north but uh yeah. they're they're geared up and uh, i think they've got eight players coming from uh northern ontario this Beautiful. year so they're, they're all hyped up to uh to come down and see us at equinel in uh, you know a week and a half well we'll certainly have a few more updates uh come next week's uh podcast uh, as we're at that point only a couple of days out from it but um and just one last quick thing um Pretty much all the details of the Flagstick Two Ball event have been finalized mm, for the yep. Flagstick Two Ball Championship at Brockville Country Club in September, September 10th, 11th. I uh, just had Brad Smith from Golf Genius help me with some very complex uh, setup, but uh, not complex. The tournament will not be a complex uh, scoring or setup, but setting it up in, in the Golf Genius software was a little more complicated than the Flagstick Open, but not so much for Brad. Uh, so that's all set up. Registration's all set up. So I will be opening that hopefully uh, at the end of this week. I just got to clear up a few more details and uh, and we'll get the, get the uh, registration open for the Flagstick Two Ball Championship that will take place in the fall. Well, Flying by once again is another episode of Flagstick Podcast. I um, want to thank uh, our guest uh, interview, um, Brian Crawford uh, from the RBC Canadian Open Tournament Director from the RBC Canadian Open for spending some time with Scott and uh, and providing us with some a really good interview. Uh, sponsors Metcalf Golf Club, Golf Sim Gurus, Greensburg Golf and Country Club, Kevin Heem Golf School, and of course, our, uh, our presenting sponsor, TaylorMade Golf Canada. Check out the new stealth line of golf equipment, TaylorMadeGolf.ca, and welcome to the Carbon Wood Age. Um, hopefully, everybody is continuing to enjoy uh, hearing and watching this podcast. Uh, be sure to follow us across all of the social media channels, uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Subscribe to us on Spotify, Audible, and Apple Podcasts. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. We will have a pretty uh, significant subscription to YouTube contest coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a great sponsor for that, some great prizes to give away. You're going to want to check that out. Like us uh, on YouTube. Click the notification bell to make sure you never miss a single episode. And be sure to get over to flagstick.com. More amazing golf content delivered there every single day and even more new stuff today. So <laughs> thanks very much for spending a little bit of time with once again with us uh, on this episode of Flagstick Podcast. I'm Jeff Potter. And I'm Scott McLeod. And always remember, go for the stick. <laughs>